Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Let's just jump right on in on this one. You see the, the topic at hand is how many f- fouls were not called on Caitlin Clark yesterday? In an 87-81 to 81 game, how many times did Caitlin Clark get fouled with no call? Well, I rewatched the entire game, and I ignored pretty much everyone else being fouled. I didn't really look too close to see how many times Aaliyah Boston got mugged under the basket. Um, I didn't really look at all the moving screens, although although I do have one on this video where you're going to see not one but two clear as day moving screens that were uncalled. But it's just funny because when you look at that game and and the way it ended at 87-81, you see that the Connecticut Sun had 23 free throws to nine by the Fever. The Fever took 46 two-point shots. They were around the basket so much. And they didn't get calls. And I'm not a person who really complains about officiating all that much. In general, because I think officiating, especially in the WNBA, is the worst that I've ever seen, even worse than elementary school basketball. But when you watch this and you see one team with 20 fouls, the other one with 11, and the game is incredibly physical, it just makes you think, what the hell is going on? Just what is going on that you can have a team with that much of a disparity in fouls called? and that large of a disparity in free throws when both teams are being tremendously aggressive. So before we continue, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Uh, Please do like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell that gives you all of the updates up to the minute. But this is the first one. This one happened early in the game. This is the one where Dewana Bonner did not allow Caitlin Clark to land. And by rule in the WNBA and in the NBA, this is not just a foul, but a flagrant foul. Offensive rebound against Indiana, something Connecticut did very well in the first quarter. Here we go. Here's Caitlin Clark. Going over a fact, Benley screen. Dewana Bonner is going to come out and help. Order of game one. Here's Clark, three to shoot. Gonna have- Look at where she shot that ball from. Look at how far out. Look at, I mean, Dewana Bonner's got tremendous reach, and actually, she's really tall. And she literally jumps into Caitlin Clark. That's a foul. Like, that's not even a debatable call. The referee is standing right there. Is he really just looking at the ball fly? This one on the bottom, what is she looking at? That one in the bottom is one of the worst referees that I've seen in the WNBA. She's the same referee that made the foul call on Kelsey Mitchell when Kelsey Mitchell wasn't even around the play, which forced the Indiana Fever to burn a burn a challenge with two minutes to go in the first quarter. I don't expect the guy in the baseline to make that call, but either the one with his hand up on the far left or the the lady who's on the bottom, neither of you saw this? From the logo, an air ball, and Clark wanted a foul. So this was an air ball, shot clock violation, they grabbed the rebound and made the layup, but it was a shot clock violation. So this was a turnover. She, This is the one where she's actually saying, what's going on? And here's the comedy. Even Ryan Rucco is sitting here saying that's a foul. Look at Dewana Bonner. She's coming up behind her, and she's talking crap to her. Look, she's yakking. Yeah, Caitlin Clark, get, push, push her off of you. What's the problem? Why are you up in my shit? I'm talking to the ref. I'm not talking to your ass. It's so irritating watching that. And then Bonner's like, whoom. No, you're talking crap to Bo- to Clark, who's talking to the ref. Now Bonner and Clark get in 
Look at this. That is a foul. Every day of the week and twice on Sunday, unless you're Caitlin Clark and you're playing in the playoffs against the Connecticut Sun and the three blind mice officials all choose to miss the call. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She absolutely impacts the bottom of Caitlin Clark. Give me a break. So that's one. So that is three free throws, which more than likely she makes all three because she's a 91% free throw shooter. Three free throws and the ball. And this was happening early in the game. <clears throat> so instead of it being a 13-4 game at one point, it could have been 16-4 or 18-4. You don't know what happens then after that point. Like the game is different. The game is different. But again, another awful, awful call. Here's another one. In a world of space, freeze, freeze. Wait. Here, look at this. This one's great. This is Mabry's three. Okay, Mabry hits that shot. The nine point Indiana lead cut to one. That's a foul right there. I don't know if you saw it up there. Up top. Clark's being guarded. The defender's left arm stops her from driving. Watch it again. Watch it again. In fact, I'm going to make this the screen. Sorry, I don't know what happened. I thought I would just make myself, put myself off of it. Um, let me see if I can make a bigger version of this. Eh, whatever. The nine-point Indiana lead. Watch that left arm. That's a foul. It seems like nothing. That's a foul. Say what you want. That is a foul. Your arm blocking my body is a foul. It's just, it is what it is. Again, another missed call. Another missed call. And then she got fouled on the around the rim again. Then she got fouled at the, on, going up for the shot. Put, look, if you look at the bottom... She's fouled. At the, she's fouled going up for the shot. Put, the yeah, foul there. The so fouled again. All right. You can't make this stuff up. That's two more free throws on the shot. And then I don't know if they were in the bonus, would have been in the bonus or anything like that. But again, she got fouled at the top of the play. All these fouls add up in a game. They create bonus situation. Next one. On Indiana again. This one's a trip. Watch this screen by Marina Mabry on Aaliyah Boston. That's a moving screen. She literally shoved her. <laughs> she literally shoved her. This is not even on Caitlin Clark here. This one was in my face. She shoves off on the screen. Look at now where Kay look at now where Aaliyah Boston is. Look at where she was, and now look at where she is. She's above the free throw line. She's above the free throw line. And now, boom, shoves her off. She shoved her into the paint. And now Aaliyah Ball, and now it's, a, it's Alyssa Thomas, I believe. Alyssa Thomas here is now going to set another screen for Mabry on Wheeler. This is a moving screen. It's so blatantly obvious. Thinking, hey, we got good shots. We just didn't hit them in game She's one. still moving. Look at her moving. She's still moving. Her enti the entire screen. She's moving. <laughs> right now they're shooting 25. And then and then Mabry misses. That's a foul up top. And this is the play where Mabry thinks she's a big badass. She barely got tapped by Clark, and she gets up like she's gonna fight somebody. She barely got tapped. Oh, like, what are you doing? Clark tapped her. She nudged her. Let's not say she let two hands shoved her. She she nudged her. And look at look at Mabry. And Mabry acts like she's... Mabry with her time in Chicago and now with Connecticut, she's played on the two goon squads in the WNBA in the same season, and she happens to be on both teams, the white girl who's a who, who wants to be a goon or play like a goon. Like she's some tough badass who's going to do something. And then goes halfway across. 
across the court to track down her own offensive board. Look at her. Terrific it's a great job by her in actually going after her rebound, even though that was a moving screen. But what, what? that was a left hand on her hip, and she flops on the ground like she got shot out of a cannon. And like she's about to get up and fight. Did she push her? Did she push her? Look, like, like she wanted to fight somebody. Man, please. Child, please. Did she push her? Yeah, she nudged her a little bit. She didn't two-hand shove her, but they all want to fight Caitlin Clark. I keep telling you, these are like the people that want to beat up the, 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 the weaker kid in school, and everyone wants to bully him and want, thinks they're going to get cred for beating up the weaker kid in school. Except Caitlin Clark ain't taking that jump. And none of y'all have really stepped up to fight. That's what makes y'all all y'all a joke. You act like you want to fight. You're not going to fight. Here's the next one. Here's the next one here. Right here. This is the one foul the entire game that got called when Caitlin Clark, a foul that was called for Caitlin Clark. In a 40 minute game in which she has the ball 80% of the time on offense. And she got one foul called the whole game. And this could have been called on either player. Mabry clearly grabbed her. Brianna Jones got called for the foul. It was a clear foul. And then Mabry's acting like she didn't do nothing. Like, come on. And this is the one time that she actually shoots some free throws. But now we get to the next ones. There's a couple more that just are like... So that's the one she took free throws on. So Caitlin Clark at this point has lost that on three free throws for sure. I don't know if they would have been the bonus on the foul up top. The free, probably two more free throws because she got foul going to the basket as well. But let's look at this next one. Okay, Caitlin Clark with the ball, being guarded by Bert. Oh, that's Burton again. Watch here, drive. She's riding her. That's a foul. Her left hand is like riding her hip. That's a foul. Like, in what world is this not a foul anymore? Like you can ride someone's hip with the ball. And, yeah, Clark creates some space, but she's fouling her. That's a foul, folks. Yeah, she separates the space, and that's a foul. She makes the bucket. That should be an and one. That's an and one. You fouled her. Your hand is on her hip, riding her from behind. When do we call a foul on this team? Why do players get to fucking body her up like this without ever being called for a foul? And then the most egregious, the most egregious, Bonners was really bad and obvious. But this one was so egregious because Caitlin Clark got fouled on this play three times. Three times. Let's, okay, watch. On, at the rip, she's being fouled at half court. Right now, she's being fouled right now. She's being bodied right now. And then the girl's flopping. You're fouling her. I, in what world are we allowed to just ride the player with the ball? You're not. It's a foul. And the referee standing right there at half court does not call it. Now she drives, Burton catches up, fouls her again right there. Uh, right there, that's a foul again. And then Mabry tomahawks her in the face. Tomahawks her in the face. Put on her back. You think Mabry's blocking shots? She tomahawked her. And then she got undercut by the girl on the ground. And at that point, it's amazing. Keelan Clark didn't even complain. Clark got smashed. No call. Clark got smashed. No call. You heard the word used. She got smashed. Bro. Indiana was lucky that Mabry doesn't hit that wide open three because Caitlin Clark's still on the ground on the other side of the court. 
But I'm going to show you this again as another another angle. Look at this. Remember. That's a foul. You see how she's riding her? She's fouling her, dude. I mean, you can't you can't make this up. You're she's fouling the crap out of her. Second she touches the basketball. That's what Burton did there. And then she fouled her again. I mean, holy Christ, look at this crap. Look at Mabry's arm hitting Caitlin Clark square across the face. Square across the face. Same three blind mice, dumb fuck referee with the ball head. You ain't part of my committee, homie. You're you're you you're a bald moron. Because you watched not one, but two blatant flagrant fouls in your face, and you didn't call either of them. And this was a five-point game. This is when Connecticut made a run. They went on a 12-2 run here. And this was in the middle of the run. Smack, I mean, smacked in the face by a forearm. Over Caitlin going inside. I mean, that's a foul. That's a foul. Like, I, folks, folks, look. I'm not a referee. I don't complain. I, I coached. So I know how hard the job is. But Caitlin Clark isn't a regular player. Caitlin Clark is the face of your league. This is like Michael Jordan. And people say, you can't compare to Michael Jordan. Yes, for the league, she is the equivalent of Michael Jordan. The financial windfall that she brings the league is the equivalent of Michael Jordan in the 80s. Like, what are we talking about here? This is a foul. It's a flagrant foul by today's rule. A forearm to the face? Obvious <laughs> Here. That's a foul. Obvious foul. Obvious foul. These are the commentators. These are the commentators that are leaving the WNBA script because it's so in your face bad. So that's two more free throws and the ball. They lost by six. They got out of shot at the line by 14. Right there alone, you got five. So you have an 87-86 game and two more possessions that would have gone in the direction of the Indiana Fever on flagrant fouls. Not including the, the and one foul, the drive to the rim foul. Kaylin Clark should have taken 10 free throws yesterday. 10. At minimum. But it's the WNBA. They didn't want her there. They didn't want the 3 million people who watched that game to keep watching WNBA basketball because they want you to see that 800,000 or 900,000 will watch the Aces. Last I checked, 3 million is more than 800,000. And the WNBA and their brilliant marketing scheme is to go against the NFL again on Sunday in game one of the semis in both series. Good luck. You'll be lucky to draw 500,000 on Sunday against the NFL. Lucky. In fact, they made a massive mistake in putting the Aces and Liberty at three. They should have put them probably at seven or 730 so that it wouldn't completely overlap with NFL Sunday night football. Instead, you're putting them at three where they're not overlap, just overlapping with the one o'clock games, but they're overlapping with the four o'clock games, too. And then at 830, you have the Lynx and the Connecticut Sun. You can't make this shit up. She got hammered, and that doesn't even include the many times that I saw Kelsey Mitchell get fouled, Aaliyah Boston get fouled, over and over Let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think of these clear and obvious fouls? Season's over, but end of the day, this is just brutally bad.
That's all I got. Leave your thoughts and comments. Be sure to like or subscribe. Pound that like button. Ring that bell. Share these videos. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Come on now. <laughs>